Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Acumen's Webinar Wednesday. My name is Stephen Phelps, and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Acumen. And today we brought in ORCID Systems to go over how EFT processing for AP payments and AR receipts is vital to support ongoing businesses and helps improve security and privacy of sensitive data. Uh, in this webinar, Robert and Stefan Lavery will show you how EFT can be used for Sage 300 and Sage Intact. Uh, but before we begin, please note that today's webinar is in listen only mode. And if you have any questions, then please use the question or chat option near the end of the presentation. And with that, I will now pass it on to Robert. Thank you very much, Stephen, and uh, hello again, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar on the EFT processing solution. So as Stephen mentioned, uh, we represent ORCID Systems, which actually has over 6,000 SAGE sites globally across 80 different countries after being in business for over 25 years. In fact, this year marks the 30th year of business for ORCID Systems. We've been working with over 450 SAGE business partners around the world, headquartered out of Sydney, Australia, but our organization is located out of Toronto, Canada for the North American region. We are the master distributors for ORCID systems for both Canada, the US, Mexico, and the Caribbean. Uh, ORCID themselves have won many industry awards. They've developed 16 different integrated modules that work with SAGE 300, and we've now introduced the EFT processing to the SAGE intact world. And just as a note, we have an average of two modules per site. So once clients start working with ORCID solutions, they tend to gravitate to some of the other products in the portfolio. And when we speak specifically about EFT processing, there are over 5,000 SAGE EFT sites around the world. Again, this covers a broad spectrum of 80 different countries. There are over 800 maps which create the file types or the file formats that allow us to automate the payment process, AR receipts, and also payroll direct deposit for SAGE 300. And we've been able to take the technology behind these 800 different file formats that represent banks and financial institutions all around the world that were originally developed for SAGE 300, and we've been able to port them over to SAGE Intact. And so there's one common mapping engine that we use. So even though EFT processing for SAGE Intact is a relatively new application that we launched in November of last year, when it was first published to the SAGE Intact marketplace, it has the tested and time proven reliability that you would expect from an application that's been sold and supported for over 15 years now. So looking quickly at ORCID SAGE 300 add-on products, we break them down by business requirement or functional area of the business. Starting with collaboration, there's a notes application as well as a document management link solution to attach documents to transactions and master files within SAGE 300. Under tailoring automation and integration, we have an amazing tool called Extender, which Acumen takes advantage of for some of their clients, where we can customize screens by adding buttons, modifying the grid entry screens. We can automate processes, integrate to external third-party databases. We really can do almost anything with Extender to make Sage 300 more automated, more streamlined, more secure by adding field level security, but also by automating these processes and extending the data to third party applications. And then Process Scheduler is just an administrative tool to automate things like day end and posting of batches. Workflow Anywhere allows you to invoke an, uh, an Extender based workflow approval process through an app and a remote action service is a document driven application where you can actually send out documents, approve them by signing with a digital signature in Adobe, and then sending that back to create a transaction in Sage 300. Our focus today is around streamlining financial processes, more specifically the EFT processing solution. 
but for those of you in the 300 world that might have intercompany transactions, we can automatically allocate expenses or revenue across multiple companies. We can also buy and sell through inter-entity trade where you create an AR invoice in one company, it creates an AP invoice in another company and vice versa. Or if you want to move inventory or buy and sell inventory, you do that through order entry and purchase orders. And then there's a budgeting, reporting, and business intelligence group of products. Info Explorer is a small BI and analytics tool that creates multi-dimensional data cubes for you to analyze data within Sage 300. Optional tables allows you to budget below the GL level, so you can budget at a customer item level. And then Report Runner allows you to hard code the parameters for how you run your crystal reports and FR financial statements so that you can automate both the generation and distribution of these crystal and FR financial reports. So people are getting information on a timely basis and based on the format that they need to see that information. And then lastly, operations and inventory management, there's an RMA, Return Material Operations Solution. And bin tracking for those of you that have inventory in warehouses and want to more specifically track the precise location of inventory by aisle, row, rack within a warehouse. So as we mentioned, we're focusing this on the streamlining of financial processes today and specifically the EFT processing where we can integrate to the payment processes within Sage 300 as well as Intact to automate these processes so that we're not producing paper-based checks anymore and having to fold and stuff and mail those. We have a, an ROI calculator that actually gives you the ability to determine what your payback is on an investment within EFT processing. And that would include the labor time, but also the printing costs of having to produce checks on pre-printed check forms, the laser ink itself, as well as the envelopes and the postage that you're using to mail checks. And I think COVID was a bit of a, a benefit to many organizations because it forced us in some ways to remove paper-based processes and replace those with online payment processes where we're sending payment electronically and where we don't have people coming into the office to sign checks. We now have an automated process that you can add approvals to to make sure that payments are being made to the correct vendor in the correct amount at the right time. And as I mentioned, we also do receipts if you do direct debits by pulling money out of customers' accounts. So as I mentioned, payments, receipts, and payroll are all supported within Sage 300. We'll talk about in a few moments uh, with Sage Intact, we have AP payments and we've just, we're actually just about to release the AR receipts portion for Sage Intact as well. So for those of you that might have recurring rents or subscriptions that you're collecting and pulling money from customers' accounts, you'll be able to do that in an automated format now. But we do find that when you employ EFT processing within your Sage 300 or Intax systems, you do get increased accuracy, security, and auditability. In fact, some people have purchased the EFT processing solution specifically because they had a check fraud committed against them where somebody intercepted the paper-based check and tried to forge the signature or deposit it into one of their accounts. And so by sending payments electronically to your bank, and particularly if you use something called secure file transfer protocol that we'll talk about a little bit more as we get into the presentations, that you can actually automatically generate the file and send it to the bank website. And it uses a token or an ID and a password to authenticate who you are to upload that file to the bank website. And so it does support remote working and a truly paperless office by everyone being able to log into the SAGE system, whether it's 300 or intact, see the payment process details, approve those, generate the EFT file, and then have those sent to the bank. And this means you can also incorporate the emailing of remittance advices to your vendors so that you don't have to fold and stuff those either. Since you're making payments electronically, it only makes sense for you to also send those remittance advices electronically. And you can send those remittance advices with password protection, in addition to encrypting sensitive data about bank account information. Uh, there's it's also the ability for you to uh, support different file formats. 
payments. So just because you're automating the process doesn't limit the type of payments that you can make. You can send payments via check. You can do wires, both domestic and internationally. You can also support things like PayPal, credit card, uh, email, e-transfers. Um, in Canada, there's something called Interact email payments that are also supported. The bottom line is that as long as your bank or financial institution has a specification for the type of file that you need to use to make these electronic payments, then ORCID systems will be able to incorporate that into the EFT processing solution. And as you can imagine, because we've been doing this for so many years, that's why we've built up a huge library of over 800 different formats. And we're adding to that almost on a monthly basis as new clients sign up to use the system. And if they don't have a format that's compatible with their bank, then we're happy to create new file formats at no charge, as long as you're running a current version of Sage 300 or Sage Intact. There's also savings on bank transaction fees. Uh, we always encourage clients to consider speaking with their banks about renegotiating their banking package because you're no longer sending paper-based checks that the banks have to clear through the clearinghouse, but you're able to uh, automate and streamline the process for them by sending payments electronic, uh, sorry, electronically. And as I've already mentioned, it does reduce printing, handling, and postage costs by creating an automatic EFT file. And it also then avoids duplicate data entry because you're not setting up a payment batch and having to redo uh, the check payment process. Uh, that just gets generated off of a posted or unposted payment batch. And so for those of you running Sage 300, of course, this is a standard Windows desktop. And you can see we set up banks and vendors with the EFT file formats, and we can generate the payment batches based on due dates. We can also do the AR receipts. And that small window in the middle, the EFT file type, is just an example of a number of the different formats that are available for use within Sage 300. And then we do have web screens for Sage 300. So if you've deployed web screens or you wanna access these screens within a browser, we can support that type of process for you as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to switch over to the Sage 300 desktop and we'll walk you through some of the key functions of Sage 300's EFT processing. And then I'm going to introduce Stefan, who will then take you through the Sage Intact EFT processing presentation. So this, of course, is the EFT processing module within the Sage 300 desktop. And as you can see, it incorporates itself into that standard Windows Classic desktop. It's built in what we call the SDK for Sage 300. So it's embedded within the same database. And as you can see, within the same menu structure. And if you want to define some security groups against the EFT processing module, another way to verify how tightly integrated the application is, is when you look at the security groups under administration, administrative services, you see EFT processing as one of those options. And this would allow you to create a profile for access rights to the different users. Because one of the additional things that we encourage our customers to do is to create a segregation of duties between various aspects of the payment process. So for example, you might have one person set up vendors for EFT purposes and another person approve the vendor bank details. And as you'll see, you must have an approved vendor in order for an EFT payment to be processed to that vendor. So by having one person set up the vendor and another person approve the vendor, you've created an effective approval process without a formal workflow, but just by using the functionality within the system to control who can set up versus who approves those vendors. And that's all part of the setup options within EFT. So when we set up the original configuration for EFT processing, one of the options is to have a default vendor status of entered versus active. Because if they're active, you can make payments right away. But by using a default vendor status of entered, then it forces someone else to go in 
and look at the vendor setup first and actually physically decide to change that default status from entered to active. And you can see here that the status must be active before you can perform EFT transactions. So that's the control measure we would recommend to create that segregation of duties between entering new EFT vendors with their bank account details and account numbers and making them active so they can start receiving electronic payments. And as we also mentioned, you would use email as a communication mechanism to send the remittance advices. So you can set up an additional email vendor address here under EFT vendors. But of course, within the vendors themselves, there are two different email addresses that you could also use. And uh, those of you using 300 would be familiar with this on the processing page. You can use the email contact if you're using multiple contacts. You've also got the email for vendor. And you can either choose the contacts email address here or pick up the email address on the address page. And if there's more than one email address, you can separate them with a semicolon and put two, possibly three different EFT email address contacts. So that's all part of the options setup. I mentioned the remittance advices, how we can assign a password to those remittance advices so that only people who should be looking at that information are able to um, open up that remittance advice. And generally that's controlled by specifying specific email addresses for who should be receiving those remittance advices in the first place. And we allow you to set up email messages that those remittance advices get attached to. So for EFT payments, you can define the wording in the body of the email. And there's a number of different variables that we can use to list the documents that are being paid, the company name and the vendor contact, as well as the payment date by which those payments are expected to be made. So this is how we incorporate a completely paperless process within the system in order to be able to control when and how your vendors are getting paid. And all you need to do to configure the system is set up the information that you've already got within common services for your banks and add to that a file type from the over 800 different formats that we have. And you'll see if I move to a US-based bank, somebody like JP Morgan or other types of banks that are supported, of course, there are standard NACHA formats, uh, and here's an example of Wells Fargo. Even though it's one bank, look at all the different file types that we have. And this is true for both Intact and Sage 300. You have positive pay, you have commercial cards, credit cards, you have different check formats, you've got international wires. All of these are supported based on the different specification files that Wells Fargo publishes to facilitate electronic payments. And that's why we say in order to deploy EFT, the first thing you need to do is check with your bank and get a copy of the specification document and send that to Acumen so that they can verify whether there's a compatible file format or not. And as I mentioned, we will create formats at no charge if you're running a current release of Sage 300, which currently would be 20, 21, 2022, and 2023. And once you've got that specification, that determines the type of information that needs to be included in these EFT files and where you want to store them on the network. Now, I also mentioned the SFTP, the Secure File Transfer Protocol, and this is supported in 300 today. It's going to be released for Sage Intact in the next month or so. Uh, and this is the ability to define the host name or the server name for your bank website, the user ID and password you use to log into that website so that when you generate the file, rather than having to upload the file separately as a, a secondary step, the file can be automatically sent to the bank website for processing purposes. So this completely streamlines the process of creating the electronic payment and sending it to the bank. <clears throat> a couple of other things I'll mention here under options, and that is you can generate these EFT files by one batch at a time or a range of batches. 
And as you'll see within Intact, you can choose the payments. Since there's no concept of batching within Intact, it's a slightly different uh, choice that you make, but you'll have a listing of payments that you choose from in order to create these EFT files. And for 300 customers, you could have a file or a payment batch, sorry, that includes both EFT and non-EFT vendors. And that way you could separate the uh, EFT payment batch from the creation of the non-EFT payment batch. And the best way to do that is to use the uh, payment code and create one called EFT or ACH. And when you generate your create payment batch within 300, you would specify one of the criteria as your payment code for ACH or EFT. And that way, you know, only your ACH EFT vendors are part of that payment batch. And that creates a nice clean audit trail because you'd still have to process that payment batch twice, once for EFT payments and once for your check payments. But once that uh, AP payment batch is created, then it's simply a matter of picking up the batch, whether it's one batch or multiple batches, because you can incorporate multiple payment batches into one EFT file. And then you just create and it generates the EFT file. And as I mentioned, if you're using SFTP, then it will automatically send that to the bank. But you can also choose individual entries from within a batch. So if you needed to make an emergency payment, just because we're using EFT doesn't limit you in any way. You still have the option to choose individual payments from within a batch or even within an EFT file that you would like to process immediately versus uh, having to process all payments at once. And this also speaks to the ability to future date if you want to post date payments. Some of your banks will allow you to use transaction date and you can specify a payment date that's a few days ahead of the actual EFT file creation date. And so even though it's Wednesday today, I could upload the file to the bank website, but specify that I want some or all of these payments to be processed on Friday which is our normal payment routine. So there's still lots of flexibility in the way that you handle payments. It's just a question of what you want to do and what your bank will support. And as we're generating these EFT files, there's an audit log that's created with a date and a timestamp with a unique EFT file creation number that will tell you the batch that uh, that EFT file contains, the user who created it, the bank against which it was created, the amount of the payments within that. And then by double clicking, you can drill into the individual payments that are included within that batch. So in addition to the security and the privacy that are part of the security of EFT processing and the encryption and password controls, there's also an audit trail. So we have a complete record of every EFT payment that was made for both um, AR and AP payments. And we also keep a log as you're setting up vendors and customers in the system, we will be listing who set up that vendor and the details that were set up for each of those vendors and customers if you're going to be doing AR direct debits. So there are two different logs here that anyone can go back and review to ensure that vendors were properly set up and approved and that payments have been properly processed as well. And for those of you that are using 300, the advices, just to show you quickly what they look like, if you're going to print, you would print a hard copy of those standard crystal forms that would allow you, oh, okay, let me go back to 56 and see if we've got, just wanna show you quickly that the forms are there. Oh, all right, so let's try 54 and print. And this will just give you an idea of the kind of information you can include on a remittance advice. But of course, because they're crystal forms, you can format these any way you would like. You can hide information. Uh, and you'll see here in this example how the bank account information is encrypted as well as um, you can encrypt other parts of the uh, vendor name if you want, or just hide the entire uh, address details of that vendor and then list the invoices that are being paid. So these are 
the types of information that you can include on the remittance advices, and these can be sent electronically rather than being printed by simply going to the vendor customer, and then it picks up that EFT email message that I showed you previously, and the vendor customer email details would be picked up based on what we set up under the uh, EFT vendors. So it would pick up an email address here or the email address under the AP vendor delivery method. And that's how we control an entirely paperless process for EFT payments to vendors, uh, AR receipts from customers, with the remittance advice details being sent by email with an attached remittance advice that's password protected. Okay, so that covers off the information that we wanted to talk about concerning Sage 300. Next up, we're going to move over to Stefan and talk about how we streamline Sage Intact payments. Stefan? All right, thank you, Robert. So hello and welcome to the uh, Intact part of today's, today's webinar. And so as you can see, we will be uh, covering in all of the uh, different formats, banks, and vendors that are listed and offered on Sage Intact. And so creating EFT payment files in the format, they are required by your bank. So when you go into a setup of then under your bank will give you all of the much important information such as your bank number, transit number, and vice versa. And those are in degree as well. And some of the uh, security features include extensive audit logs of EFT files and transactions created, plus changes to your banking details, and uses industry-leading WebAssembly technology. So mapping of your banking information takes place within your environment and not on a third-party site. And for the Sage Intact module, it's developed in the Sage Intact Act SDK, which provides a similar, a familiar Sage Intact look and feel, including the plus standard security and customization capabilities. And of course, it solves stores. Sorry, <laughs> all data within your uh, Sage Intact database. And so, as you can see here, when you first load load up Intact on your browser, this is just as an example of the different things that we will cover when we actually dive into a little demonstration. And this will be a very important or FYI that when we actually dive in virtually, you'll see how the uh, AP payment requests and how you generate your payments. And this is pretty smooth sailing. And yes, yeah, so the first step you want to do is you want to enter post approved payments along with advances. And following that, you can select one or more payments at a time. And so, for the purpose of the demonstration, I'll be showing you what happens when you do just one payment, which is then generated into an EFT file. And when we actually go in, and you will find all of the uh, generated payments in EFT AP payment requests. And when you see those, you will then be able to download it and it'll download immediately onto your or computer file as a dot .txt file, which you'll just see in the demonstration just has all of your banking and payment information listed in that file. And once everything and is given the green light, you can then import and upload. And when it has successfully done the import, you then just click confirm. And that is the quick and smooth sailing of how you can do payments and transfer payments on Intact. And so if we just hit the pause button and then just rewind it, taking it back to 
say, successfully trying to confirm the payments, let's say, a hypothetically, you get an error message popping up saying that your uh, bank number was either missing one or two numbers or something was wrong with the invoice number. So what you would do then is you would then just hold, click hold on that file and you would go in and make whatever changes you had to. And with the beauty of Intact is that it's not like opening up another browser where you have to start completely from scratch. You can just go in and make those changes. And when you've made those changes, you just hit refresh and that sums it up in a nutshell. And so now without further ado, we will uh, go in and take it from there. When you are on intact, the first thing you wanted that I will show you is the different formats. And so as Robert mentioned, and earlier, there are over 800 different formats that Sage Intact offers. However, there, these, this is just a short list of in, Intact offers. So, <laughs> so don't be scared in thinking that this is all that Intact offers because they have more. And so for the purpose of this demo, we will be using this uh, not a pre note of format. And then if we look at the EFT banks, as you can see here, these are all of the different formats. So if you're doing, say, a Canadian payment, you'll want to use this 400 underscore CHK can CPA 005. However, for the purpose of this demonstration, we will be using this 100 underscore or not a, a bank format. And again, like I said at before, there, there are other bank formats that Intact offers, and this is just a, a short list of what, what is offered. And so now, without a further ado, we'll then just go straight on over into accounts payable. And this is just a list of the vendors. And I'll just show you for demo purposes, this one that I've created here. And this is just a, a generic layout of what the vendor you create, as well as what your bank bank will give you as far as information goes when you go in to set add up the vendors. And now if we go to bills, and what's nice about this setup is if you need to create a bill, it is strongly encouraged that you can just take an existing bill and just simply duplicate it, that file. So if I, I click edit over here, what I will then just do is I will just click duplicate on this payment. And one of the important one of the things when you uh, are setting up a payment is you not only I will have to make sure that you have the, the uh, date and every thing and right, but the most important thing is you will want on to make sure that your bill is set up as a records transfer because even though printed checks are listed on intact, take it from me, folks. <laughs> it will be a bit of a struggle to try and find it if you uh, set it up as a printed check. And so when you've done that, you, can, you then have, have the option to just click pay now and whatever date you have it listed, you will then find it under the uh, EFT AP payment request. All right, so as, as Robert mentioned, similar to uh, 300, on Intact, you have the option of generating one or more or payments at a time. And so just for the purpose of this, I'm just going to uh, generate this one right here. And when it generates 
and you'll get a pop-up saying that the file has successfully generated. And so when that does take place, we would then head straight over to the EFT file list. And as you can see here, what, this is the new, it was payment that has been successfully been generated. And as you can see, the status of it says new. And we will then just click download right here. And when your file uh, is downloaded, you will see that the status has changed from exported or did from new. And this is just a quick glance of what at your bank file will look like once, once you've downloaded it. And like I said, you have all of, of your banking information, including payments and vice versa. And so when that has, has been and taken care of and everything is all fine and dandy, we then just click confirm. And so like I said, if by any chance you get an error or message popping up because something in your EFT file has a red flag waving that you need to change, what we will do then is we will just click hold, make the changes. And again, the beauty of Intact is you don't have to make a whole new EFT file. You just go in, make whatever changes you have to. And once you've made those changes, we then just hit refresh. And as you can see, I haven't made any changes, so we'll just ignore that. And one, once that has been and taken care of, again, we just hit click confirm. And that, in a nutshell, is how smooth sailing with payments can be done on Intact. All right. Thank you very much for that, Stefan. So as you've seen in the first release of Sage Intact, and there's already been a few updates as well, including a key security update in the last month, we can handle vendor payments, including advanced payments with over 800 different file formats supported, including domestic payments, wire payments, international payments, and positive pay files. We have user-definable EFT file formats, and we can assign multiple formats per bank account. We can't overstress the importance of that. So you may have one bank, but you need to do positive pay. You need to do standard ACH. You might have pre-notes. You might have wires. You can have multiple formats assigned to that one bank, and that makes the system that much more flexible, and that's one of the key differentiators between what Intact offers through their base EFT functionality and what ORCID adds as an enhancement to the Intact processing. Now, when we're looking at future releases for AP payments, we want to be able to add definable remittance advices, user-definable remittance advices. That is under development as we speak, and we're looking to have that done sometime over the summer months. Uh, we're always looking to add additional security features and audit reports. Sage 300, because it's been out longer, has more extensive audit reports at the moment. We highlighted the audit logs for both the EFT file creation and the addition of vendors. So we'll be adding some of those features to the next release of the EFT processing for Sage Intact. And I mentioned the SFTP, where we automatically upload to the bank website. Currently, what you have to do in Intact is download the file and then upload it up to the bank. Uh, whereas in 300, we can go directly to the bank if we want to. Uh, that's something that we expect to release in June timeframe. Uh, we've just released the AR Direct Debits, so that's coming next week in a final release. And we had a webinar actually yesterday, a more generic webinar for the business partners in North America, showing the new features of AR Direct Debits, which really it's the mirror image of what we do on the AP payment side. So a very similar process, except we're pulling money from customers' accounts rather than sending money to vendor accounts. And we've also been asked to add employee expenses. So that's a unique feature within in Sage Intact that we don't offer with Sage 300. And we've already got a good start on that. So we anticipate being able to release 
the employee expenses portion of EFT processing by the end of July 2023. So as you can see, there's a lot planned, a lot in development, because the uptake on the EFT processing with Sage 300 has been tremendous over the years with over 5,000 different sites. But we've also found that with Sage Intax, since we launched in November, we've been selling an average of six or seven EFT sites every month since December. So we're very pleased with the response from the intact community. And so you can go to the ORCID Systems website and get information. There are videos, there are help, um, online help and user guides available. All of that content is available on the ORCID Systems website. And so we want to thank you for attending today and appreciate your time very much. Stephen? Thank you, Robert. Um, so at this time, we'll uh, answer a few questions since we have some time left. Um, Robert, there's a few questions that came in already, so I was wondering if I could just start now. Um, sure. The first one that came in says, uh, can Sage Intact automatically upload the EFT file to the bank? Uh, yeah, good question. And that is not available today, but we expect within a month or so by the end of June that we will support the SFTP, the Secure File Transfer Protocol, so that you can do that process in one step. Perfect. Um, next one that came in, it says, for Sage 300, uh, does ORCID EFT work better in the desktop or web interface? Actually, it works exactly the same, whether you're using the Windows Classic desktop or in the web. Um, so the functionality is exactly the same because, as you might be aware, we call it the view logic within Sage 300. That's the business process logic underneath the screen. The screen is actually a separate service layer within the application. So all that happens when you run the web screens is that it's calling the same business logic, but using the web UI instead of the Windows UI. So it's exactly the same process. Um, next question. Uh, once the bank information for the vendor is set up, can we restrict who can make changes to the vendor's bank information? Yes, uh, that's part of the administrative services security groups that we talked about near the beginning, where you can restrict someone who can just view the information versus somebody who can edit and approve that information. So absolutely, that's a standard security feature within Sage 300 and likewise with Intact. Gotcha. It looks like I'm seeing two more questions. Uh, the next question is, how do you pull money from people's accounts? Yes, yeah, so that is a negotiated arrangement that you would make with your customers to say you would like to be able to pull money from their bank accounts. And your bank typically has forms that your customer can fill out, which provides their bank account information that they allow you to pull money from. And they sign off on that saying that they've approved direct debits being pulled from their account on a periodic basis. And that's something that you would then file with the bank so that they're okay processing those direct debits on your behalf by pulling the money from that customer account. It looks like we had one more question. Um, it says, is the EFT module available automatically in Sage 300? Um, I currently do not see it, they said. Uh, yeah, so it's something that you buy separately. It's a third-party add-in module that you would purchase through Acumen, and you could speak to your account manager at Acumen about that. Perfect. So it looks like that's all the questions we have. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, if you guys do have any more questions, uh, please contact Acumen by calling us at 407-965-2411. Uh, or you can email us at am at acumenfl.com. Again, if you're interested in learning more about EFT or other products by Orchid Systems, then we recommend reaching out to your assigned account manager and they'll be able to provide more information. And with that, I want to say thank you again for Robert and Stefan for the great presentation. And we hope to see you guys all again on our next webinar Wednesday. Thanks very much, everyone.